Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we would like to look into the debugging way of Godot with Godot native script. So that means we are using the LLDB. As in the previous videos, this course or this tutorial is actually focused on doing development in Rust for Godot. So that's what we got so far. We had some basic keyboard controls. However, we did not have the logic in place to actually stop the movement of our sprites. However, now we are looking into how to debug our code and then can continue implementing some base logic. So first of all, we need to run our Godot project and then next we need to change to our task manager or to our monitor, depending on the operating system. And here we are looking for our Godot um, process. So actually you can find two of them and the one which does not have a parent process um, attached directly to it is the child process. So as you can see, the process group here is separated and another one then the parent process. So that means this is our window. Heading back to our terminal and now we want to continue by building our libraries by invoking cargo build. Cargo build per default is doing the building process with the debug flag in the background. So that means we are able to use a debugger for our code. If you build it in release mode, make sure this is not the case because otherwise you are unable to debug the particular library. So let's close our current game window and restart it. And now it's important the process ID changed, of course, in that case. Now we are actually looking at our Godot editor. You can see it's because of the parent process and the other process in the task manager or monitor, activity monitor, you can see under the process group, the required ID, which we will now need. Back in the terminal, we just ensure that we are within the script folder, on the root level of the script folder in particular, and then we invoke Rust minus LLDP. Next, we will now attach to our game Godot process by using process attach minus P and the process ID. Then you need to pass username and password in order to allow the debugging on OS X. It might take a bit of a time and now we can start listening all the breakpoints. And as we didn't define any breakpoints previously, you should see no breakpoints. Now we want to set the breakpoint in the controlled libRS file on line 38. So therefore we are changing back to our LLDB terminal put in the comment breakpoint set minus minus file lib.rs and the line 38. Hit enter. And now when we execute again breakpoint list, we should have actually four breakpoints because all files associated with lib.rs got on line 38 now a breakpoint. If we want to execute it, we just type in the next one continue. And as soon as we start pressing the A button on the keyboard, we should actually stop in the code properly, as you can see it here. Now the program or process stopped at line 38. By using the print, comment and the variable name, for example, or particular instance variables, we are able to inspect particular values of objects or structs. you are also able to do PO and then pass this kind of variable with the dollar symbol and then you should even get more details about particular objects. 
However, the formatting is another topic in LLDP, but for basic debugging, this can be already quite useful. By using next, you actually step over the current debug and you stop in the next line. So that means as long as we are always invoking next and next and next, we just go through the various lines in code. Of course, during inspecting, you are also able to add another breakpoints. So let's add another breakpoint already on another line. So therefore, we will now just press the key again. And now we want to add, when we invoke next, for example, we see a bit more of, of the upcoming lines. We want to add another breakpoint at line 42. Therefore, breakpoint set. And this time we just put in line and the number 42. Now the breakpoint just got added. And by using next, we just step over. And of course, this breakpoint gets only invoked once we press the D button. And as you can see, once the process is stopped, you cannot easily return to it. So therefore, you need to just let the program execute again by doing continue. And now we resume the process and now we are able actually to see the window again. And here we are. Now we just entered the breakpoint in the if condition when you press the D button. So let's print again. Now the value is currently false as we did not assign yet the new value. Therefore, we invoke next and print it again. And you should now see that the variable changes to true, to the Boolean value true. Let's continue the process. Therefore, let's just type several continuous comments into LLDP so that the process is resuming as shown now. And of course, again, an interaction with the window directly would trigger the input. And therefore, we would have a stop again. Th let's now delete all the breakpoints by using breakpoint delete and continue. And now the program just continues just fine. Maybe at the end, another quick hint. Um, you can actually reload the existing game window with the reload button in the Godot engine. So you do not need always to check about the ch ever changing process ID. I hope you enjoyed the video so far. Please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.